Okay, the one that a lot of people have been waiting for, the AI player card or the AI trading card demo that we're now making available uh, to you as a template that you can download along with the Canva design files that you can tweak uh, to sort of help you uh, get up and running with your own version of this pretty quickly. Now, uh, for those of you that saw this at PBX or maybe you have seen other places where I've posted about it, I have made a few little design tweaks to this just to simplify the setup uh, just a little bit, but otherwise it is uh, exactly the same as what you've already seen. So let's uh, jump into the iPad and just run through a demo so you can just be reminded of how it actually works. So I'm going to come over to the iPad here and just uh, tap start. Now we've got our live view here, so I'll hit start to get going. Uh, I'm going to choose my player position, so obviously this is for basketball. So I'm going to say shooting guard. Uh, choose my shirt number, 23. Uh, put my name in. And of course now we can choose gender and skin tone to sort of help influence the AI a little bit. Now of course, don't come at me for not having all the available options. You can of course, if you wish, go, uh, go out of town on this and add all the skin tones and genders and, ethnic and ethnicities and hair colors or whatever else you might need. But for this demo, just to keep it simple, we've got two genders and uh, the, the skin tone, three skin tones here. So I'll go ahead and select those. And it's gonna count us down for the photo. All right, we'll just let that process. So this normally takes uh, around uh, 10 seconds or so, just depending on uh, the internet and uh, server load. Okay, so we're done. So that's the output. So we've got the, um, uh, the player card with the number, my position, my name down the bottom, as well as the original photo of me and the AI version uh, of me up there as, as well. So the first thing I want to do is sort of jump uh, into Canva so I can just sort of show you uh, all the screens that are involved in this and, and sort of what, what, what they all are. Uh, so here we are in Canva. So basically I've got every single screen that you'll, you've seen in the demo available here as an editable uh, template. So the very first one here is just the, the welcome screen or the, the, the attract screen. Uh, so I had this as a video. So basically you could just swap all these images out for uh, anything you want. Uh, and in Canva, if you come down to the bottom here and you press this little button, uh, you can pop open the timeline here. And then when you click on this element here, you can see that I added an animation to it. So you could change that animation, uh, no worries at all. Uh, and then when you go to export uh, your files, you'd want to export this one as a um, uh, MP4. So that'll download that particular screen as an MP4. Now, of course, you don't want to download all your pages or all your screens as MP4s. So you'd probably just um, make sure that you're just selecting that current page or page one. Um, otherwise, you're going to get the whole entire UI as an MP4, which you don't want. Uh, so moving down, we've got our ready screen. So the ready screen is basically what you see um, when you first go to take your picture. So I've just kept this nice and simple. It's a, a ready.jpg and the live view will fill the square there. And then we get into the survey side of things. So the surveys is where we capture the data uh, to configure uh, the, the player card aspect of it. So what we've got is um, the first up is the position. Now surveys in Breeze, and if, if, if you are new to Breeze, the surveys, uh, you know, a little bit more of a advanced feature, but not too tricky to understand. So I think the key thing, uh, the key thing, that, the key way to think about this is that they're just images, okay? So we've got one screen, which is what, what the survey looks like when nothing is selected. And then we have the second screen here, which is essentially exactly the same, except now we have what it looks like when there is an option selected. So essentially, uh, when you tap on one of these player positions, we want to change the color from white uh, to orange. And so we do that by creating two versions of the screen, one unselected and one when it is selected. Then in the event editor, we'll put that together by adding the touchscreen elements on top of it. Coming down, we've got our shirt number. So this is really a similar sort of concept, except rather than uh, the, the, the buttons for the uh, player position, we've just got a keypad. Uh, again, we will add the, uh, the numbers in the touchscreen editor in, in, in Breeze, and then we will tell Breeze where to place the output of that, which will be on top of uh, the shirt here. There's two versions of this screen just to indicate what the keyboard will look like when it is pressed. So this is what the keys look like. Uh, by default, but when you press one of them, it's going to change uh, to the black color just to let you um, know that you have pressed that particular number. 
Then we have the keyboard to enter your name. So again, this is all pretty straightforward. So uh, every every letter of the alphabet's there, and we'll assign uh, the key the interaction to that in the event editor. And it's the same with the uh, the one above. You have two versions of that screen. Uh, one for what it looks like when it's not pressed and one what it looks like when it is pressed. Now these keyboard screens you can actually take to another level and add uh, the uppercase and the lowercase version. So if you had a particular font that did require um, the ability for people to specify an uppercase character versus lowercase, you can add additional screens to cater for that. But this font uh, doesn't have lowercase, which is great. Uh, so we only need the two keyboard screens, which does keep it a little bit simpler. Then we move on to our uh, details or the gender and skin tone. So it's the same principle as um, up, up earlier with the player position. We've created two screens. Uh, one screen is what everything looks like when it's not selected. And then the next screen is what everything looks like when it is selected. So when you tap uh, the, the male, uh, it'll turn orange. Or if you tap the white skin tone, uh, it'll put an orange uh, circle around it. So remember, these are just graphics at this stage. We'll need to export these and put them into the event editor and assign the touchscreen actions. We then have a taking photo uh, screen. So basically, this is the screen that's going to display when the photo is being taken. So the live preview, once again, just uh, pop into that one. And then we have a processing screen, which is a... Uh, uh, a video, again, doesn't have to be a video, but I think a video is better just because it's um, animated and just sort of sends a stronger signal that sort of that you're waiting or something's happening. So I just had an animation, um, oh, that pop up, uh, animation on the please wait, which you could pick from any of the available ones uh, that Canva has. So again, when you export that particular screen, you would export it as um, a MP4. Uh, and then lastly, we've got the sharing screen. So basically, we've got our airdrop email options and the finish button um, and the email keyboards as well, which are very similar to how uh, the keyboards above work. Now, most of these screens are JPEGs. Some of the screens need to be uh, PNG files or the survey screens are PNGs. The rest are JPEGs aside from the animated screens, which are going to be videos. Now, if we just come into uh, the folder of screen assets, you can actually see that I have named everything in the Canva template uh, to the correct file name. So we can see the ready screen is already called ready. Um, uh, the, all the survey screens are named correctly. So when you go to export, you'll uh, get a set of files that are all ready to go named correctly. You just need to ensure that you're saving it as the right file format, either JPEG or PNG. And um, the easiest way to do that will be to check against the, um, uh, the files in the demo event, and you can see. So you can see, for example, ready, the ready screen is a JPEG, uh, but the survey screens are all PNG files. Now, one of the reasons I like doing things in Canva, aside from the fact that it makes it easy to share with you guys when we're doing these sorts of videos, is that it's really easy to reskin these things. So if you're doing this event, but obviously the team that you're working with is not, not orange, uh, you can, for example, click on the orange start button here and change the color, say, to this blue one here. And then Canva has an option that says change all. So if we hit change all, uh, aside from a couple of text elements, it's now going to go through and it's changed all that orange to uh, blue. Uh, so that's a really handy feature and it makes it very quick to reskin um, demos like this. Now, obviously, you probably want to change this logo too, but this is just an element that you can delete and re add on. All the elements in here, in fact, have come from Canva. Um, so if you're doing another sporting team uh, or another type of sport, uh, football or uh, baseball or whatever it might be, uh, you should be able to find all the elements you need to sort of switch out um, quite easily. Um, and same goes for fonts. So if you don't like the fonts here, um, you can just switch them out for a different font. Now I'd say as much as possible to keep things simple if you are going to change things and redesign things. Um, I'm just going to revert back to our orange here. Um, uh, try... To keep it simple, don't go moving things around too much. Anytime you move the graphic, you then also have to move the touchscreen action in the event editor. So once you have all those files the way you like, you can export them, just keeping in mind they have to be a JPEG or a PNG or a video file depending. You will then copy them into your uh, folder for this particular event. 
Um, now I do have another video on how to get the demo event into, um, into the event editor, so I won't cover that off in detail. So essentially if you need to make any changes, you're just switching out these screens for the new ones that you've made in Canva. Now if we go into the event editor um, and go into this particular event that I've imported already, I want to have a look at the touchscreen actions so you can sort of get an idea of how this is all coming together. So we'll start on the ready screen. So you can see here, this is our ready screen and we've got our live view area. Now I've got that positioned uh, nicely just in the middle. And we can also see that I've got my photo aspect ratio set to square. So we're going to capture a square image. The key thing with face swap, it doesn't actually really matter what photo you're capturing too much uh, because it's really just passing the facial information across the AI to do the processing and it doesn't care what ratio it is. So square I think works well in this case. So we've got square here, and down the bottom here we've got a button, a touch screen action that says still start. Um, now I've selected that one from the list here, and we've just drawn uh, the box around our start button here. So when we tap on it, it'll start the countdown. Now because we're using surveys, when you start the countdown, it's going to shoot us straight into our survey keyboards, and we can see here we've got the graphic for the player position. So how this works, we've got our five positions here and we have our touchscreen actions um, on top of them. So let's go ahead, I'm going to delete all of these and we're going to do it from scratch so you can see how it works. Okay, so I am going to add a new radio button. So these are uh, considered to be radio buttons and we need to assign a group name. So basically, how do we want to refer to all of these uh, buttons that we're going to add? And they are uh, position buttons. So I'm going to call it position. And then we need to assign an ID. And the ID is really what is the name or what is the output of this button going to be when you touch it. So keeping in mind that we're using the output uh, to print onto the print layout to set the text. So the, I, uh, the ID is going to be power guard. So we'll put that in there, power guard. And we've got position. We'll okay that. So now that's created a touchscreen action and we want to put that around uh, the player guard button. Now what will happen is um, if we come to the pressed version of that, rate of, of that survey where it is selected orange, you'll see that they, the touchscreen action is still in the same place. So it is essentially saying when you tap on this area, anything in this box when you tap it is going to be switched to what is in the box on this particular screen. So that means, for example, if you just did something like this and only partially um, covered the, the shirt, when you tap on it in the user interface, uh, only half of it, only this section here is going to change color. Uh, the rest of it will remain um, unchanged. So you need to ensure that these uh, touchscreen actions cover the entire area. So I'll quickly go through and add the rest. So we add a radio button and it's a position. So it's important that these all are called position. And this one's going to be shooting guard. And we're going to scale that up and cover the entire area. Oops. And we're going to add another radio button. Called position. And we're going to call that uh, center. I'll do it the Australian way because I'm Australian. And we'll cover that. And again, uh, add a radio button. And the group is position because these are all related to the same thing. Now, this is more important if you actually had multiple radio buttons, which we'll get to on the skin tone and gender screen. Power forward. Now we want to make sure that these aren't crossing over. Now it doesn't matter that the text is not fully selected because the text on the, uh, the other version is the same color. So there'll be no difference. So that's not going to make, uh, not going to be a problem there if the text is not fully covered. We're more interested in the shirt because that's the thing we want to change the color of. Okay, so we've got position and then small uh, forward. Just excuse my laggy computer here. There we go. Um, I'm going to do that. Okay, so that's all set. Now we've got an OK and a cancel button here. So let's just have a quick look at how we do these. 
So these are a different type of button. These are called a key action. Uh, so this is sort of emulating a key press. And the name of the next button is a uh, 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 triangle bracket, uh, next, and then uh, close bracket. And we're going to put that uh, touch screen action around that. And then we're going to add another key action. And we're going to call that one cancel. So when you tap on that one, it's going to close and take us back to uh, the very start. So that's that screen there done. Now we're going to go across to the next uh, survey two. And this is our keypad with our shirt. So let's just uh, delete that one off. I'm not going to delete all of this. I'll just delete a couple just to show you the idea. So basically, when you first get these graphics into here, you're just going to it's just going to be playing like this. Uh, but obviously, these won't do anything when you tap them. So we want to add again a key action. So basically, we're saying uh, what what are we going to do when we tap that area of the screen, and we want to output the number one. So we grab that and we just drag that around our number one. And now we need to add a key for number two. And we'll drag that around that and so on and so forth. So basically now whenever you touch this area of the screen, it's going to put a number two. But where is it going to put it? Well, we have to tell the software where we want the number to output on the screen so we can see it. So we're going to say uh, add text input, which is basically like adding a field. Um, so I think I call that shirt. So we're going to call the, the text input ID is called uh, shirt. And we're going to drag this down here. And we can edit the text input and we can change the height. So the height is represented as a percentage uh, width, uh, percentage height of the, the screen you're using. So basically the font is going to be about 5% of the height of your screen, which is maybe a little bit low. So we can maybe put it up to like 10%. Uh, now in here, you can also change the color. So if you don't want black, you can make it uh, white and you can also make it a mandatory input as well and change the alignment. So we probably want it center justified. Now, if you're a bit of a power user and you know how to use regular expressions, you can also uh, do further um, magic by using regular, regular expressions. And you can actually uh, use information captured on previous survey screens in here as well. And we can also set the maximum number of characters, which is important. We only want to output two characters. We don't someone want someone to be able to enter a six-digit number for the back of their shirt. Okay, so we'll do that. So that looks about right to me, and we'll position it roughly where we think that's going to go. And again, we have to have our cancel and OK buttons. And that reminds me, it's not next, it is OK. So let's go back and fix that one up. Uh, someone was probably screaming at the... Uh, screaming at YouTube when they saw that I got it wrong. So well well done you if you if you um, saw me do the wrong thing. Okay so that all looks pretty good so we've got and actually one extra key we've got the delete key so it's another key action and the code for that is delete in the uh, triangle brackets. Okay so we'll then go across to the keyboard now this is the same thing it is a just a graphic keyboard and we have to add all the little keys to it now if you're doing this sort of thing on the regular the trick is not to go changing your keyboard designs too often keep it all sort of the same that way you don't have to go to the effort of resetting up uh, resetting it up the only difference here of course I've got a space bar and the code for that one when you add your key action is uh, space in the brackets and similarly we need to add a text field so where does the text go when we start typing we want it to come up here and in this case we also want the color to be white uh, we've got it centered. Uh, there's no maximum characters, although it probably would be a good idea to limit it to something. Um, and we've got the uh, height set as 4% of the screen. And again, if we wanted to, and we probably should make some of these things mandatory so you can't skip past the screen uh, unless you wanted to do it. Okay, so I'll okay that one, and then we'll come on to the last screen here, which is quite an important one. And this is the uh, radio, or the surveys, which have uh, two different radio types, on, radio buttons on it to specify uh, gender and skin. Okay, so let's uh, delete these off and re-add them so you can see how it all works. Okay, so I'm going to add a new radio button. And this time, the radio button group is going to be called gender, because uh, that's how we're going to refer to these options here. And then we're going to have gender 
mail set as the ID. And then we need to just drag this touch screen action around this guy. And we're going to add another radio button and the radio button group is also going to be called gender and it's going to be female. Okay, so now we have two options here, uh, male and female. So when you tap on those areas of the screen, it's going to switch between, um, it's just going to show us the orange version of the area that we've tapped in. Okay, now for the skin tone, it's the same concept. We're going to add another radio button, but the, this time the group is going to be called um, skin. And we're going to have uh, black for this one. Now, I know that's probably not quite right. Uh, Colour is a little bit of a mismatch, but this is just conceptual. Again, um, just trying to keep the demo sort of simple. Uh, add another radio, we'll call that skin. And then we're going to call uh, that one tanned. And we'll add one more radio button and we'll call the group skin and white. Now, obviously, at this point, if you wanted to, you could add uh, even more skin tones. You could add all the genders if you want. You could add other options we haven't thought about yet. Um, but in this demo, just keeping it si uh, simple. There's sort of really no limits uh, to, to sort of what you can do in that respect. Okay, so we've got all that set. Now let's have a look. What else have we got here? Um, I think that is probably the bulk of the screens, to be honest. Um, one, the rest are all sort of pretty self-explanatory. So one is the screen that's displayed when the actual photo is uh, being, being taken. Uh, and then we have our sharing screen. So it's just the same thing. So if um, I'll just quickly delete these off. Uh, we want to add our touchscreen actions for airdrop and email. So we'll right click and say add action and we will say airdrop. And we just want to add that here. And we want to add email, which is this one here. And we've got our preview area. So this is where the final output will appear on the screen. If we don't want it there, we could put it up here. We could put it down there. We could make it small. We could shrink it. We could do whatever we want. But I think we had it like that. And we also had this button here, which was uh, uh, still share close. So basically, that's the button just exits the share screen uh, once it's done. Uh, then we also just had our email keyboard screens as well, which work basically the same way as uh, the survey screens. We have your graphic and you have to individually sign all the keys. Now, one of the nice things about Breeze and this ability to do that is that you can also have hidden hidden actions. So I've got a hidden keyboard action up in the top right hand corner. So when I'm testing and I don't want to keep on typing in my full email address, I can just tap up on the top right hand corner here and that will auto fill uh, my email address. So basically it is a key action and I've just literally put my email address in here. So that means whenever I tap that, that'll be filled in uh, automatically. So that's a bit of a trick there. All right, so once we've got that, um, that is really the foundation of the interface and the experience that you saw in the demo. But what are we doing with all this survey data that we have collected? Well, we need to use that um, for a few different things. So we need to do it uh, for the print layout. So if we come across to the Photos tab and the print layout here, uh, we can see we've got our design and our uh, text options. So before we jump into that, let's just head back to Canva. Uh, for one moment. Now there's another template that I'll give you and that is the basic uh, overlay design that we used in this demo. Now you can change this once again. Um, it's just sort of split up into its individual components. Now the only thing you can't do in Canva and you might have to do this in Photoshop is just removing the uh, black circle in the middle. Unfortunately Canva does not give you a way to delete that bit out. So because this is going to be an overlay and we essentially want to put a circle around uh, the original photo you will need to cut that out. Uh, so you end up with something that looks a bit like a bit like this. A bit hard to tell in this example but that's a transparent area just like uh, this is this is there. Uh, so you export that file overlay as a PNG um, and that would go into your folder of assets replacing the one that's in here. Uh, so you need to do that. Now we also need to talk about fonts. So the font that I have used um, 
if we just come back in here to put the uh, player number and name and uh, name and position sorry is a font called commando so you need to download that font and you can get that from a website called uh, dafont.com and just search for commando download that font you need to install it um, into windows if you've already got uh, the event editor open once you've installed it you might just have to restart the event editor um, before it'll pick up but also we need to get that font onto the iPad as well. So the fonts are not automatically sent across to the iPad. So let's have a quick look at how we do that. So I'm just gonna jump back uh, onto the iPad for a sec now. I use an app, a really handy app called iFont, which you can download for free off the App Store. Uh, so if you open that up, now the great thing about that is um, uh, you can either Either send the font file across uh, from your computer onto the iPad through AirDrop or some other means, but they actually have Defont sort of uh, built in to the app, and you can just search for that Commando font uh, right here within their app, which is really just a little website they've uh, built into the app. And here you go here, you can see a Commando font, so you can say download, um, and that's going to prompt you to install that font through the iFont um, program. So you just basically follow the, um, I already had it installed, but you would um, just follow the steps uh, to get that into your iPad. Uh, so it's going to throw up a few warnings because getting fonts onto an iPad is a little bit of a, uh, a workaround, but this program makes it nice and easy. So just follow the steps and you'll have the font on your iPad and you'll have the font um, on your Windows PC as well. So let's have a look at what's going on on our print layout here. So first of all, we've got uh, the image on here twice. So the first copy of the image is the AI processed version of the image. And we've got that set up nice and big to fill this space up here. And I've actually probably oversized it a little bit just to get the sizing and the scale correct. Now we also then have um, down the bottom here, is the little inset photo that we've got that's in behind the overlay and if I right click on that one you'll see that I have the option here use original unprocessed image so that means this image here is going to be the one before it was sent to AI which is essentially the original uh, the original image uh, so to get these images onto the page you can basically just right click and say add photo one then it will put a new copy of that photo onto the page now we've also got text, and this is when the survey um, the surveys come into play. So if we just go back um, for one second and have a look at our survey screens, we had on this very first one here our radio buttons, and the radio buttons are position and then the ID. Uh, and then we have our shirt, so that's a text input, and the ID is shirt, and then on the third survey we have another text input and the ID is name and lastly then we have these gender ones but that's to do with the FX so we'll come back to that all right so if we go back into the print layout so you can add a caption um, to the, uh, to your print layout by right clicking and saying add caption uh, and that'll add a new caption to the screen I think it's just probably buried at the behind the back here somewhere um, but I've already got some on here in this part of the demo so let's just click on one and uh, edit it so you can see here that I've got this little token so let's just copy this or cut uh, copy it or cut it even and I'm just going to replace this with um, uh, let's check what I've got there yeah that's right um, so I'm going to cut that I'm just going to put in the number 10 so we can just see if we just put a number in here uh, what that's going to look like so when you're trying to get your scale and position before you start trying to put the survey data or the tokens in there just set it to the actual text uh, some representative text so just the number 10 just so you can get your scale and positioning correct so obviously we can increase the font size here if we think it's too small um, and we could put it up here if we wanted to um, but I think it looks good down here so I'll set that back to 200. Now, if we edit this caption again, we want to use a token. Now, a token basically is uh, just pulling the information from the survey uh, that was captured. So uh, the shirt number was collected in survey number two. So it's curly bracket survey number two underscore text. It was a text input type survey um, option. And the ID was shirt. So we have survey two uh, what survey it was, 
uh, what type of survey it was and what information from that survey are we wanting to output. So it's survey to underscore text underscore shirt. So that will now be replaced with whatever information is entered in that field when the photo booth is run. And it's the same here for the um, uh, and, and I guess I'll, I'll just make the point. The reason I would set this up originally is just with putting in the number before the token is just so you can get the positioning right because it's very hard to get the positioning right once that token information is in there. Uh, so we'll have a look at the position. So we've got survey one. So the position was collected on the first survey. It was a radio button and it was the position group. So basically what we want to do is take uh, the, uh, the, the data that was collected when someone selected the, their position on survey number one. And again, we can set the um, font here, font size and the font color, and even the uh, opacity and the alignment. So in this demo, this is all sort of set up and ready, ready to go. Uh, and similarly down here, we've got the survey number three text name. So basically on the third survey screen, uh, we had a text field and the ID was name. Uh, and that's where we collected the name of the player. And that's where we wanted to output on this particular screen. So we have this big single image here, which is the AI processed image. Then we have a smaller one down here that's inset, which is the original image. Um, and we enabled the original image by just selecting it and ticking the use original unprocessed image option. So that is that side of things all set. Now the slightly trickier um, bit, I suppose, is the FX side of things. So let's have a look at what we need to do there. Now in the uh, event template that I've given you, um, there's a folder. Uh, is a folder called face swap images for FX. Now these are all the images that you need uh, for this specific FX uh, AI player card demo. Uh, obviously if you're doing your own event you'd switch them out for the, but for the purpose of testing here are the ones that you need. Now these have all been named quite deliberately and they line up with the survey data. So uh, that survey number four if we come back into the general tab and go into the touch screen actions and have a look at survey number four, we have the gender male and female and we have the skin tone black, tanned and white. So what we've done here is created our six face swap images and we've named them all female, tan, female, white, uh, female, black, um, spelt um, male, black, male, tanned, male, white. Now this is important, uh, the name of the actual file itself doesn't matter so much, but it does, is important when we get it into FX just to make sure we have the naming convention correct because we are gonna take the values collected from the survey um, to line it up with the correct image. Okay, so let's jump across into um, Breeze FX. Okay, if you haven't signed up, you can sign up for free and you'll get fee, uh, 50 free uh, credits to play with, which should be enough to get you up and running with this demo. Okay, now I had some of these in here already uh, here, but let's go ahead and just start afresh. I'm gonna delete these out so we can do it completely um, from scratch. And yes, I do have a demo on here called Toilet Test uh, because I was just trying to test something uh, <laughs> a little crazy, nothing inappropriate, I promise you. Okay. So we're basically uh, blank. We've removed all of my uh, pre-made basketball ones and we'll add them from scratch. So I'm going to add a new FX config and we're going to call it uh, female black. Now the name, it doesn't matter, uh, doesn't matter so much. It's just, uh, just a reference. What does matter is this token. So this is very important. We need to follow this sort of naming convention here that relates specifically to our survey options. So we're going to have female dash black okay and it's going to be a face swap and then we're going to upload uh, select our target image I'll come to Dropbox uh, and we'll come into our face swap images and we're looking for female black okay which is great so we'll add that one all right so now we're going to add the next one and we'll call that um, female tanned and this needs to be female dash tanned. And it's gonna be a face swap, we'll create target, and we're gonna select our female dash tanned uh, option. And we'll 
create that one. Okay, so we got that one. I'm going to add female white, female dash white for the token, and you'll see how this all comes together in a moment. Oops, did not mean to do that one. Female white. Male black, male dash black, face swap. Male tanned, male dash tanned. Okay, so you'll need to go through and add all of these uh, to your account. And then we have lastly male white, male dash white. Okay, so we've got all the options in there ready to go. Now, what we're interested in in particular is the URL that is created. So when you're using BreezeFX, you need to copy and paste this URL um, into the uh, post-processing URL field, which is here. Um, normally you would just copy, if you were just doing one face swap for an event that was just gonna be turning someone into this white uh, basketball player, you'd copy that entire thing uh, into there and anytime you took a photo, uh, it's gonna switch you into that particular player. Now we wanna have the option to switch between any one of these six based on those survey results, which is why the naming of the URL structure is so important. So we've got male white, male tanned, male dash black, female white, female tan, female black, which all correlates uh, precisely with the survey data and how we have set that up. So what we need to do here is copy up into uh, the token bit. So we just want the first part of the URL that includes the main Breeze FX uh, domain, uh, the API bit and our company name. So we'll copy that and we'll come into the event editor, into the photos tab and the uh, enable post processing URL. And we wanna replace this bit that says your API URL goes here up until that forward slash and paste that in. So now what we're doing, instead of saying at the end here, male dash black, female dash tanned, we are using uh, tokens to pull data from the survey to create this dynamically. So we're now saying that we want the URL to be whatever the results are of survey four uh, in the gender radio group. So it'll be male or female, dash, and whatever the results of survey four underscore radio skin were. So if I select male dash white, I'm gonna have this, this, informa this part of the URL is gonna return automatically male dash white, which will line up with this URL here, male dash white, so therefore it's gonna turn me into a white uh, basketball player. Conversely, if I picked female tanned, uh, it's going to switch out this part of the URL for female dash tanned, and then it's going to use this part of, uh, sorry, this particular URL in Breeze FX, so female dash tanned. So that's how you start putting things together. Now, uh, you could uh, just run this demo uh, really just by installing the font and just getting set up with the FX part. You don't have to change any of the graphics if you don't want, uh, but if you do wanna uh, tweak things and change things, that's, this is basically how you go about doing it. Now, this is definitely a more advanced use of Breeze because we're pulling together a whole bunch of different things and it's quite heavy on the use of surveys as well. So I wouldn't expect someone necessarily has just jumped into Breeze for the very first time to be for this to be their very first event. Um, and if you can do it and pull it off, um, uh, kudos to you. Uh, but hopefully this template makes it a little bit uh, easier to get started with and all makes a little bit of sense. So that's sort of the gist of it, and that's how we get from, uh, you know, I'll just switch back to, to this one here, and we'll go back into Breeze. So that's how we're able to sort of pull all the things that we've uh, created in this user interface and leaned into the use of surveys, surveys quite heavily uh, to build this custom UI. 
and you can sort of hopefully get a taste of what else you could do uh, with this by adding more detail to surveys and start customizing more things in the app uh, and more personalization and print layouts. Uh, we've got some more exciting things planned um, in, in this respect for the app in the future. So I'm very excited to see what people can do with this, but I do hope that this template and this guide uh, will get you on the path to um, offering these more customized experiences to your clients. Um, I think it's a really fun way to do it, but it's a much more engaging way to do it as well than just picking options from a big fat list. People really like sort of interacting with the screen and feel like they are personalizing uh, their output. Uh, so if you have any questions, please jump into the comments and let me know. I'm always happy to help um, and or drop us an email and we'll guide you through it.